This time, we're knitting shoe bags. Hey, it's Denise from Lumahat.com. For more information and a list of supplies, visit the website. And special thanks to Carol from PromiseLearningATL.com and Lori Kapaschewski for covering the cost of closed captioning. All right, let's begin with the cast on. We're going to be knitting with two strands of yarn as one. Go ahead and secure that yarn to the anchor peg. I'm going to be doing a simple knot. You can do a slip knot if that's more comfortable. And then either direction is going to work. I'm going to the right and we're going to wrap every peg. When you're done wrapping that last peg, Here's your first, that's your last. You're gonna take the working yarn and you're going to half wrap that first peg, get your hook, and you're going to knit off. This is the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. Again, you're going to take the working yarn, half wrap the peg, and knit off. That's the second peg. And you're gonna continue on to the next one. Here's the third. You're gonna do the same thing, half wrap and knit off. And my peg is a little loose, no big deal. Go ahead and get the hook, knit off, and continue until you've done all of your pegs. Mental note, the cast on is not counted as a row. Done. For row one, we're going to knit, again, using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So take your working yarn, half wrap your peg, and knit off. Continue to do the same. You're going to do this for all of your pegs. So just keep knitting and go around the whole loom. Don't forget to remove the knot off the anchor peg. You are done with row one and we're off to row two. We're gonna also knit row two, but this time we're using the E-wrap version of the knit stitch. So you're going to begin by taking the working yarn and you're going to wrap all of your pegs. You'll notice that I'm pushing the existing loops down one at a time, only enough to get me, to allow me to put the um, next loop on the top. If it's easier for you to push them all down before, that's fine. I find it preferable to do this. Don't push them all the way to the bottom. This might give you a tight stitch when you knit off. All right, this is the last peg that I wrap. It was, it's gonna be the first one that I knit off. This is gonna keep your yarn from unraveling and you really don't want that. So just go ahead and now knit off all of your pegs so go around the entire loom and knit off all your pegs until you're right back at the last um, peg next you're going to knit rows one and two four more times and this will give you a total of 10 rows then for rows 11 through 35, we're going to do the figure eight stitch and I'm gonna show you how to do it now. Take your working yarn and you're gonna skip that first peg right there. Go to the second one and you're going to wrap it, come behind that first peg you skipped and half wrap. And then you're going to knit off those two pegs. You're going to always work with two pegs at a time. So, I'm going to knit off that first peg and now I'm going to take the working yarn which is now on that first peg and I'm going to skip the next one and right there and I'm going to come here and I'm going to wrap that peg then from behind wrap the one I skipped now they both have loops and I'm going to knit off both of those pegs both had two loops and now you see where my working yarn is and I'm going to skip the next peg. And I want you to see it from a different angle. Right from the top you'll see that I skipped that peg. Go to the next one. I'm going to half wrap it and then take the working yarn and take it behind the one that I skipped and wrap that peg. 
Now they both have two loops and I'm going to knit off both of the pegs. And remember I'm always working with two pegs at a time so I'm going to do the same thing again. This is where we left off. And you're always going only one peg um, at a time per se because you go back to the one that you skip. So you're really not skipping any of them. You're skipping it at first. So here's the working yarn. I'm going to skip one and then I go back and I wrap it. And there's the figure eight. That's why it's called a figure eight. Now I knit them both off and I'm going to continue the process. Skip a peg, wrap, wrap, knit off right here. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to skip, wrap, wrap, form that eight knit off both pegs and repeat the process. And like I said, you're really just moving forward one peg at a time. If you notice, I'm right back at the peg that I so-called skipped. So you're never really skipping a peg. And you keep going until you're back at the front. You're, um, you, you're doing the last peg which is right here and that ends one row that's the end of one row and now you continue because you need to do all of your rows if I only count my figure eight rows there will be a total of 25 rows if I total all of my rows from row one to now I will have when I'm done with my figure eight 35 rows in total and then I'll be ready for my row 36, which is a row of knit stitch using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So just like before, I showed you already how to do the knit stitch. Go ahead and knit your entire row using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. And when you're back at the beginning of the loom, then you're ready for row 37 which again is a row of knit stitch, but this time we're going to be using the E-wrap version of the knit stitch. And so you're going to wrap all of your pegs, okay? Remember we're on now row 37. And when you've wrapped all of your pegs, here's the last one, you're going to knit off the last peg you wrapped, and then you're gonna continue to knit off all of your pegs just like you did before. Keep knitting until you have knit off all of your pegs. In my case, it's 41 pegs. And now you're going to repeat rows 36 and 37 four more times, just like we did at the beginning for a total of 45 rows. And then we'll be ready for the basic bind off. This bind off is worked over two pegs. And for this first set, we're going to wrap both pegs one and knit off and then wrap peg two and knit off. And you're going to take the loop that is on the second peg and you're going to take it off that one and move it over to the first peg. Tighten your working yarn and then you're going to knit off and you're going to take the loop from that peg and you're going to move it over. So your bind off for that first peg is complete. From this point on, however, you're only going to wrap and knit off the second peg. Remember that the process is done over two pegs. So this is the second peg and you're gonna take your loop off that peg and move it over and tighten that loop Go ahead and knit off and then you're going to take that loop and move it over and now your bind off for that peg is complete and you're going to do the same process again. We're working over these two pegs. These are already done. You did the bind off now it's here and you're going to wrap the second peg and then you're going to well, this is what you're not doing. You're not wrapping both of them, okay? You're only going to wrap one of them 
and that one is peg number two. So you wrap that second peg, knit off, take the loop off of the second peg, move it over to the first peg, tighten, and then you're going to knit off and you're going to take the loop off that peg which is your bind off and move it over to the one next to it and now you're going to start the process again you're going to wrap the second peg you're going to knit off take that loop over to the first peg tighten knit off and move the loop over and that one's done make sure you're in this case that you get your two strands of yarn and then just continue the process. All right. Knit off, move it over. Now you're working over these two pegs. And continue until you've done all of your pegs. All the way back to, in my case, peg 41, because I have 41 pegs on this loom. So you move it over, and this is your last peg you're going to knit it off and knit it off one more time and then I'm going to take the working yarn and wrap it around my loom because I need a long tail and that just gives me an approximate of how much I need and now I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to pull it and pull the yarn all the way out all the way out all the way out and that's going to release my work from the loom take the loom and put it to the side So I'm done with the bind off and what I want to do is find the side where I did the cast on because I want to sew that to close it and you'll see these deep curls I want to remove this this is optional you don't need to do this and in order to remove that what I'm going to do is find the string right here and I'm going to take the opposite one and I'm going to pull on it and I'm going to continue to pull around um, all of this see right there's was the working yarn. so I'm, I'm going in the opposite direction to pull on this string and as you can tell as I pull it there's a lot of leftover string and you notice that the a lot of the curl is gone you see that it's it's pretty straight that's what happens when you pull on all of this excess string and like I said this is optional you don't need to do this but as you pull it you can tell see right there you can see where I need to pull next and again you don't need to do this keep going all the way until you get back to where that initial string was and you could see it because it still has a little knot on it it was the um, working yarn when I attached it to the anchor peg that's that's that string right there and I want to pull all of it and look at all the string, all the excess string that I have. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and make a knot so I can secure this work. And then um, I'm going to use this to sew it. But you see how all the wrinkle is gone. And like I said, you don't need to do this. But it makes everything a lot neater, a lot more secure. There's so many good reasons for doing it. Then um, I cut off that knot that I had with my scissors. I'm going, I thread this excess string and then I'm going to turn my work inside out and I'm going to um, sew these two sides together. So take all your work, the string, the needle, everything, and turn the work inside out. Make sure you have the correct side, it is the cast on side and I'm gonna get it nice and situated and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my needle and I'm going to like I said so make sure that you get these outer um, stitches I guess you can call them they were the ones that were curled and you straighten them out you're gonna go ahead and feed the needle through those so that you can sew it and we want to sew this nice and secure uh, you don't want it to open, uh, you know, as you store your shoes here to travel in your bag. You want everything to stay secure. And so this is going to be the first step in sewing this part of the project. And like I said, you didn't need to tighten it. But as you can see, there's the edges are still a little loose. Well, they would have been way 
more loose if I had not tightened the cast on stitches. See, they're still kind of a little wide. This is why I prefer to um, work at tightening that cast on uh, row of stitches. And so just keep um, sewing those two sides together until you get all the way to your edge. And then as just to secure everything together, um, you know, you can make a knot right here. In my case, I'm going to turn it over because like I said, I want to secure it and make sure that it's, um, it's not going to come apart, uh, inside the suitcase and just not do well. And so I'm going to take my needle and my leftover yarn and I'm going to bring the two sides. You can clearly see uh, where they're the two sides that you were sewing together and then just kind of reinforce it. Nothing major. It doesn't take um, any amazing technique. You're just going to sew the two sides and like I said you can you can see the stitches from both sides. You're just reinforcing and just keep going until you've gotten all of your stitches. All right, so you're done with that part of it, and now you can go ahead and get your needle. You're actually gonna need it. We're gonna be working on this top part here, which was the bind off. We're gonna attach the rope. So turn it inside out and find your place. Get your rope ready. And personally, I like to get it situated where I want it because I don't want it moving around too much. So I find more or less the location where I'm gonna um, affix it or I'm going to have it, attach it, whatever you want to call. And I get uh, this needle right here, nothing major, and just situate it where I want it. It's temporary. It's not going to hold it big time, but you just want to more or less have the rope where you're going to want it. And this should be about three inches and you can see it ends where the figure eight stitch starts and you want that so that the bag is breathable. And right here between the numbers two and three, so at, at the two and a half inch mark, I'm gonna go ahead and feed the two ends of the rope through to the other side. See right here? And then I just find another opening and I feed it through. That way I don't have to make um, any special knitting. I just put it through like that and it's gonna work great, you see? You don't have to make um, any buttonholes or anything. And then just turn the fabric and we're going to use this long tail. I'm going to use my um, large eye needle uh, or yarn needle. And I'm going to go ahead and feed that long tail through. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this together. So you're going to half that three inches of fabric. And you're just going to sew right at that very edge. You're sewing the knit stitches the, to, together. You're going to half that knit, knit stitch portion of the fabric. Not, you're not sewing it to the section where the figure eight is. You're so, you're, you kind of like half the knit stitch portion of the fabric and then you sew. And we're sewing on the inside. So your fabric should be inside out. See that? All right, just keep sewing all around. Don't forget to remove that little pin. You don't want to poke anybody. Take it off and keep sewing.
Once I have that rope nicely uh, attached, I go ahead and I add a large whole bead. And uh, sometimes it can be a little hard to push your rope through, so you might need some help from your hook. And that just helps put all the fibers through. You want to, you want them to go all at the same time in. And once you have your bead uh, nice and situated, you make a knot to make sure your fibers don't get loose and your rope gets all ugly. This keeps everything nice and neat. Push your uh, bead down. And then the edge is going to need a haircut sort of like this. And that's it. Just add the other bead to the other side and there you go. It's done. It's a nice breathable bag and it's nice and secure. I hope you guys like the project. Thanks for watching. Please share this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe.